Crafty Beg is in the house. It's sponsored by Create and Craft. Hello and welcome to Crafty Beggars in the House. Joining us on the show today, she's here. It's Jo Edge and she's the upcycling queen. We've also got the new machine that's taking the crafting world by storm. And Britain's bat guru, Nick Potter, will be here giving some marvellous advice on craft related stresses and strains. But first, we've got our paintbrushes at the ready in honour of <laughs> truly the upcycling queen, Jo Thank Edge. You. Welcome, Jo. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Well, we're standing by this incredible piece. Talk us through what you've done with it. Okay. Originally, uh, the desk and the chair were destined for the dump. Uh, it was falling apart, so all knocked apart, re-glued together, totally stripped of rather nasty lead-based gloss paint. And then start building up the layers. Hold so, on, let's go back a step. Where did you find the beast in the first place? <laughs> you know, um, did you just pass a dump and it was there? Or? No, that one actually I found in the back of an old restorer's uh, shed. Okay. Uh, just rotting. Right. So um, the chair was given to me um, because people give me furniture, it kind of, then they don't have to chuck it away. Okay. Oh, so, so you didn't come together? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Did you do any woodworm treatment on it before you yes, started? Yes, woodworm and uh, all the joints were re-glued. Okay, great. And how many coats of paint did it take to create that wonderful veneer? Um, it's 16 processes. How um, many? <laughs> 16 to build up Gosh. the patina of age. So it's all brand new and it starts with emulsion. Wow. Um, as simple as that. I lose the will to live after a couple of, <laughs> a couple of uh, coats, that's it. But can I ask, because I can see here, and I'm sure we can get a close-up of this, it's this um, crackle uh -huh. effect yes. here. Now, is was that already there? Is that authentic? Or it no. looks so real? No, is that's that something all, you've done? It's all new. Because wow. there was nothing on it, it was bare wood. Oh, I see. So to build it up, and the cracking is different, like on the chair, it's tiny, fine details. Very gosh. But it's yeah. to show, because when you have an old piece, it doesn't age all exactly the same all the way across. So you have to, to give it that appearance of age, you have to build that up and do different types of aging in different ways. Wow, and even your um, sanding back is so subtle, because you see a lot of pieces, don't you, Wendy, mm. that you come across some new pieces that are aged, and the sanding is not good. This mm. is where it would have naturally worn, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> naturally worn and chipped, and there are a couple of techniques which I can quickly show you. Yes, well, I'll yes, tell you about be later because, on. Because we were going to say, I mean, obviously not everybody is going to be, you know, up there doing 16, Yes. Uh, to this kind of thing. <laughs> mm. So, what's something that's more accessible to the average okay, crafter? I've got here a really quick finish that you, anyone can do. It's really cheap, um, and it, it has lovely results. Really spectacular. Great. It's in the French distress style, uh, which is very popular at the moment. But we're talking. This is different here. So you're talking <laughs> this style here. Yes. Yeah, so it's beautiful. You particularly like this, I didn't love you? that. <laughs> I love that kind of limed look. Yes. But so w this is would this be the bit you've started with? It starts off with a, a charity shop frame that you oh. can Yes, hold yes. on. <laughs> Talking of which. Hold on. <laughs> now Wendy, you've got one very similar to this. I've got one very similar because you gave me <laughs> one and and said I can't keep this anymore. Like, you know when we had that period of you saying, "Can it go in your garage?" Yes. 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 <laughs> so I've actually ended up, Joe, with pretty much the identical frame but it's it's like this it's gold and it's chipped yes so this is particularly interesting for me because i have this at home well, okay ready to go have you right. i can't remember when yours has got the mirror in it hasn't yes, it yes yes yeah. this so, does have a mirror it does have a mirror uh, but it's just easier to show you should always take the mirror out if possible mm. because on the back and i'll show you the original on the back if you have a mirror and you don't have clean edges yeah. on this piece here, when you have the mirror back in it, it will show all your nasty, messy paintwork. 
Oh, so right. you either paint this the same colour or you keep a clean edge. Right. Okay. okay and good. then it will look more professional. Good. Yes. Okay. We're all Which about is the that. finish that you want, yes. isn't it? Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. We all want that finish. Mm. So with um, frames like this, they're really intricate and you can't sand them mm -hmm. as easily as a, a flat one with moulding. Mm. So you always need to prep a piece really well before you start painting because it will last. And there are products on the market that will. Uh, kind of key the surface for you. So you paint them on and then you block them off, leave them for 10 minutes and then you can paint. And that will key in all these little intricate areas. It mm -hmm. will key it so that the paint will stick. But what's it called? What would somebody ask for if they went to their sort of okay. DIY uh, shop? You can get it online, Crug Cutter Gloss Off. Um, is right. one of them. Okay. ESP is another. Right. Um, okay. There are many pro products on okay. the market, yes. but make sure it's clean and grease free before you start painting. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, you're going to have a go at this, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, but I've noticed, can I just ask you, because I've noticed these are emulsion paints, yep. aren't they? They're like tester pots. Yes. Do you use chalk paint ever? No, I very rarely use chalk paint. I'm an emulsion girl. Okay. Um, it's, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can paint a huge, um, you can paint this with a 250 and have some left over. Fantastic. Wow. Um, so, so it's a cheap option for okay. people that mm. sort of have a lower budget. Okay. Um, it does the job as well. If you want to make it more chalk-like, there are additives on the market you can put with your emulsion to make it a chalk paint. Okay. So Let's just crack have on, because yeah, I'm aware yes. of the time. Yes. Right. I mean, nothing looks more chalky to me. I know, that. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> really, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Right, just a quick, this, I've put the base coat on already. Yep. Um, so we've hidden the gold, but if you have bits of gold showing through, don't matter because it doesn't matter because you'll add on to, yeah, to, to it. You then, um, and this bit is the third stage, which is a bit of wax to give it okay. a bit of age. So right. we're sort of building up the layers. Mm -hmm. I've already mixed some I prepared earlier. Yes, okay. very good. Uh, Annabelle. Mm -hmm. uh, you mix your emulsion to um, a sort of like single double cream consistency. Okay. So, so you, water it down, you don't maybe. want it. Yes, you water yeah. it down, but just tap water. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, so you mix it, and it is, it's really runny. Mm. Okay, and then you just dab it on like this and brush it in. There we okay. go. So you keep going. All I, I mean, you are trying to cover all the grey or yes. not? Yeah, I want to oh, cover you all of it. You want to cover all of it. You so want you want the it. chalk sort of effect mm. for the to get into all the crevices. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, right. okay right. you can use that Should brush. It's all right. No. Yeah. When did you like that one, darling? And then you have to do this while it's still wet, ladies. Mm. Oh. No, no, no. Nope. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, oh, okay. wait. Right, so make sure you see this area here. Yes. Make sure you work it in. Okay. Um, and then you rub it. You just rub it off with a dry cloth. Oh, and that's what gives it the chalky yes, look and makes course. the bit stay in. That will really become clear in about three seconds. I'm, yes. I'm going to give you this brush. Oh, thank you. Okay. Right. And away you go. Now and move Joe, down a bit. I will. Joe, yeah. <laughs> just tell us because I know you. You um, if people sort of want to find out more or how they do it, you're on yeah. the upcycled. Hour, aren't you? Yes, I belong to the Upcycled Hour Forum. Yeah, uh, it's so you, a, you do that as well. You do that. Oh, you I'm, do gonna, the I'm wiping. Am You're I? You're wiping. Oh, no, you have to leave it just two seconds. Okay. Um, the Upcycle Hour is an amazing um, group of professional upcyclers. Yep. They. Um, <laughs> we should be on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we meet every Tuesday night, or we we slot into Twitter at okay. eight a.m. And you meet yeah. online. And we meet online. Okay. Uh, and it's a great way to meet people uh, of like-minded our yeah. friends uh, that are highly professional. And we do. It's not a selling. Hour. It's like swapping stories more, yes. isn't it? And really? also asking for mm. if you've got a problem with something, asking what someone would do, um, asking for advice, also celebrating our successes. So if someone's yeah. had a, a, a good sale or a good show, yeah. Yeah. Um, we now meet a couple of times a year. Uh, oh, physically uh, meet. So we meet, yes, actually in the session, which is really weird because some have become really close friends. So you finally get to meet them. Wow. Uh, so that's lovely. And also we have... An exhibition coming up, and we'll be having more um, in Brighton. So that I think we're done. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You're, you're, done. you're quite much <laughs> right now. We're gonna have to work out. So you literally rub I it off. I love it. It's, it's that the, fast, and it's, it's a dry cloth, not a wet cloth. 
it's a dry cloth we're using right. now. If you find that you've put too Perfect. much on or it's dry, nearly dried and you haven't got enough off, yes. then use a wet cloth and it will take I off see. the white. Yes, because it's emulsion. It's yeah. just the perfect technique for this. And what fascinates me is how the, the addition of the white has changed it to, to sort of, the, it's kind yeah. of pearlized and very different to the base colour. It's okay. amazing. It's Thank you so much. Jo. Uh, Thank you so much, Jo. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. There's one little quick tip okay. for you to really give a wow factor. A bit of gilt wax. You've aged it with some dark brown wax. Just rub the silver over and it will highlight and complement the white. And it will just give it that extra layer, that what? extra va va -voom. Right, Joe, you take it home then. Yep. Do the va va -voom. I will. <laughs> Photograph it, send it to us. We'll fly it in at the end of the show. That'd be great. Time to take a break now, but don't go away because when we return, we've got a review of the machine that's taking the crafting world by storm and we're going to meet Britain's premier back specialist, Mr. Nick Potter. See you soon. Crafty Beggars in the House is sponsored by Creating Craft. Crafty Beggars in the House is sponsored by Creating Craft. Welcome back to the show. Now, a new machine has been launched recently and it's taken the crafting world by storm. It's called Screen Sensation. Take a look at this. Hello, I just wanted to tell everyone about this product. I've been asked so many times how I've created it. So if you have a look here, this is all printed onto glass. Now, it looks as though I've also printed it onto paper, but I haven't, it's just a reflection. So that's glass, the same product, and I'm not going to tell you what the product is yet, on cloth. Now once this is ironed, it's heat set, so you can even wash it. Like the top I'm wearing today is done with exactly the same product. It's amazing. This one here is one of my absolute favourites. So this is done with two different screens. So it's done on paper, so it works on paper, and again it's on glass. If you worry about how you're going to dust it, it's fine because it's all on the inside. If you change your mind when you make a mistake, you can wash it off. So it's absolutely perfect for that. Now I know skulls aren't everybody's cup of tea. They're my favourite. I think that is absolutely amazing. The detail that you can achieve is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And then you can decorate the frames exactly how you how you please. You can also paint and colour these in. I've chosen not to because I quite like the fact that it's black and black and skulls works actually really, really well. And then another one here is script. Now, again, the detail that you can achieve with these screens is amazing. And again, doesn't matter. You can dust it, wash it, doesn't matter. It's not going to come off until you want it to come off. I've had so much fun with this product. My house is now full of it. I remember going back to, to school days, um, the only way you could screen print, now I've given it away, it is screen printed, was with a great big wooden frame. This is the only product that I've seen that allows you to do that at home. So it's, to me, it's quite unique. I've never seen it anywhere else. And all I remember from school was carrying great big lumps of wood. And if you made a mistake, you then had to go away and start again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you just how easy this is to produce. So I'm going to do an owl for you today, and the detail in here is phenomenal. So I've already attached it to the screen. Don't want to bore you with that, but you just make sure, hear that noise, it needs to be quite tight. Open up your machine and slide it in. Now the reason I've put it in that way is because I like to print from the top of the print. Now I'm going to use the black card, so you just place it into the machine, into the system there. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just so that it doesn't move, and then close. And you can see through that you've got it in the right place, because there's your card. Now with your ink, give it a stir. It's got a technical term, fixotropic, which basically means you have to stir it. Give it a stir and it loosens up the, the chemicals in it. I don't know the real technical term. 
and then spread it along your screen. Now you might think, wow, she's putting loads on there. It doesn't matter because I will show you at the end what you do with any ink that's remaining. Position your scraper at a 45 degree angle and then slowly go across your design. Now as you can see there, a little bit is missing, which is absolutely fine. Just plop a little bit extra on and go over it again. So there's actually nothing. I always scrape the excess back into my pot. And then when we open it, that's what you can be achieving with this screen sensation. And the detail is absolutely phenomenal. I cannot wait to get started on mine, Wend. Me neither, but I know that if I bend over the way I usually do crafting, yeah. my back's gonna go. Yes, now, talking mm. of which, we are now <laughs> joined by Britain's back guru, Nick Very Potter. Cool. You <laughs> are the Jamie Oliver of spines. Well, you have no equal, cool. and I speak from experience. Oh, I know, yeah. I know, you've, you've had 15 Nick's... years ago, yes. I met you and you put me right. It was yeah. a long time ago, it was mm. long ago that yeah. long. Well, you're still here. I'm still here, and yeah. recently you went to Nick, Wendy. Yes, I went to Nick because um, literally bending over, doing the crafting, um, really started to irritate a disc in my yeah. spine, and it turned into a prolapse mm. disc, it indeed. you call it, yes. And it was really, really nasty. Nick put it right, but it was the position that I was working in which triggered the whole thing mm. off. So I think other crafters must suffer with back problems. Do you get a lot of people who are doing something in one position for a long time? Universally, the big problem for most spines is sitting. And it's also how you sit and in what position. Most of the time, if your hips are flexed up all the time and your shoulders are rounded, then you get the back muscles beginning to tighten up. And the same muscles contract and shorten. And then posturally, they, when you then stand up, you then got pain because everything's been put on traction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is particular positions you hold, and I, I've noticed a number of my patients who do do crafting, they're very, uh, they enjoy it enormously, particularly to release their own tension, ironically, because actually it's a distraction from the rest of their lives. Um, they don't always take on board that actually it's not just structurally what causes their pain, but also that their own stress, what's going on at home in their life and their jobs, also causes them to become very shortened and contracted with their muscles, and it tends to shut down their breathing and all sorts of things. So back pain isn't just about the structure, but it's oh. about how you use your back, what you're doing. A lot of it is habit. I mean, nine times out of 10 people are just doing something with their back that's causing asymmetry mm. or strange positions. Um, uh, musicians are a good example, playing, playing strange uh, uh, musical instruments. They find they're holding long periods doing awkward movements, and particularly in crafting. If you're holding a position slightly rotated, leaning forward, and then very tense for hours, and they get distracted into it, and they get carried mm. away, they can be doing as long at their crafting as they are in their uh, hours at their work. At the work. But it's ironic, isn't it? Because crafting, as we all know, and being creative, mm. is, is a, a proven point that it lifts the mood, it lifts the spirits, it, it alleviates, you know, sort of mild depression. Mm. So it's sort of really good on the one hand, <laughs> yeah. but it can be really blooming painful on the other. Would you advocate standing? I would, absolutely. Most of the time, if you're painting, if you can do anything that involves standing, then I would do so. And in fact, a lot of good products out there on the market that allow you to bring desks up. You don't have to spend a lot of money on, on electric desks, but you can get various things that will raise and, and hold things for you in different positions. Mm -hmm. um, standing is generally better. You actually use more calories an hour if you stand up than if you, it's about 80 calories an hour, so it's always a good thing. <laughs> um, and we know, sadly, that a lot of, lot of sitting um, causes a lot of other long-term chronic illnesses. So actually, it's good to get up and move around regularly. So okay. don't get too intent on what you're doing for too long. Get up, move around, flex the muscles. Do some stretching. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it, having a good posture when you're working. A lot of people have now home crafting businesses. They're, they're, they're working mm -hmm. as hard doing the crafting as they are in their, in their mm. daily work. Yeah. Um, and we've got here, if you are really, really suffering, mm. I know you've, you've actually invented mm. this, yeah. this gadget, haven't you? I have. It really came out of years of, of recommending to people that they should use various massage tools to release the trigger points that develop in their muscles. These are painful spots that develop. And the classic ones are up into the shoulder and give you headaches, mm. ones in your buttock muscles that can go down the leg and mimic sciatica. Most of them can be easily released themselves. They don't have to go to their osteopath, their chiropractor, physio. They can do a lot of it at home, and that gets very expensive if they were going to go and see people all the time. It's also about the recipe that you use to, um, to release people's spines, not just physically, but also we, um, in this particular product, we actually mentioned breathing, how stress and sleep, poor sleep actually increases the amount of tension in your body and you don't recover well 
so you become agitated and uh, and actually hyper anxious. And it's a and, vicious um, cycle. It's a vicious cycle. So and what we are. tried to do is put together a program uh, that links with the tools, uh, teaches you how to breathe. There's a book that you can read. It's in every format that you want. Some people want DVDs at home and do it in their front room, and some people want to sit at their computer. Love it, a lot of it. They can actually, you know, the tools they can have hanging around. They can stop, have a little massage, right. release it off. But I can't begin tension. to think how this will work. I know it's a strange. It's a strange <laughs> looking device. Yeah. Believe it or not, it's very <laughs> mathematical. The, the curves are mm. actually designed so that when you want to go into actually massage your shoulder, let's give it a go for oh, you. Oh, go on, that so turn round. That's it. So if you take, if you take hold of it yes. like that and hold sort of one hand on that one mm -hmm. and one hand on there. Oh, yes. The curve allows you to go over your shoulder, mm -hmm. okay? You can then come down, for example, into the muscles of the shoulder blade. Oh, yes. And you can massage up and down. And then if you find a particularly tender spot like that one there, and if you yes. just push forward, yeah. because of the curves, what it actually allows you to do is not use much effort. Oh, no, no, not maximum, actually. Maximum yes. pressure. Yeah. Oh, oh that is good. Great. That works. What's great is you can do it for yourself. You exactly. don't have to get to exactly. somebody, you know, to say, please, can you massage my back? I'm in agony. Exactly. And yeah. you can use it as a treatment program or you can use it as a maintenance program to stop Brilliant. anything developing. And this Excellent. little gadget here? That one's a strange one. We actually developed from the idea of the physio tennis ball using it. You can actually use it down your buttock muscles. You can lie on the floor and wriggle around. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also mm -hmm. the, the knob on the end is actually designed to be used. It's, it's comfortable for arthritic hands if people have that problem. And also they can use it for massaging their hands. If you're spending hours working, sanding, refining things, yeah. then you're going to get It's quite muscles. soothing, actually. Yeah. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. No, that's brilliant. And of course, if you'd uh, like to find out more about Nick and all of his products, you can visit the Crafty Beggars website. Lovely. Well, that's about all we've got time for today. Thank you very much, yeah, Nick. Thank you so much. Coming in and giving us all this advice. We'll see you next time when we meet some more Crafty Beggars in the house. Bye for now. To find out more about Crafty Beggars or to be on the show, go to craftybeggars.tv. Crafty Beggars in the House is sponsored by Creating Craft.